Yeah, man, where would I say this started? Like, in my hospital, like, when I was like, um, six, seven, I just used to like, listen to people like, I don't know, like, Tupac, Nelly, Biggie, like every, every, you know, all the stuff that was on the TV, on the radio at the time, and like, that was really where it was. Like, a lot of the 90s R&B, all of that stuff, and I just used to catch, like, loads of vibes, like, and my family, they're Jamaican, like, and I just used to hear a lot of reggae, a lot of bashment, and it just made me want to rap, do you know what I mean? And from there, like, by the time I got to the, like, the age of 10, I wanted to, like, get beats, you know? Like, from quite a young age. I'm Mazza Beats. I'm based in North London. Right now, we're at the Arts Room. This is where I work a lot. Next door is Six Figure Music. That's my team. And yeah, I'm just like a, a UK producer. I produce a lot of rap, hip hop, trap, drill, and I try a bit of everything else. And starting from around the age of 10, I went on my mum's PC and um, I downloaded Reason, Reason, Reason 2, yeah. And I started from there, man. And then over the years with school and everything else, youth centers, etc., etc., I just learned bits and bobs and then I developed myself. The first tune that I think like opens some doors for me, I think could be Young Reeks Levels. Cause the thing is like, when I, I was working for years, you gotta understand, I was working on myself for years. Like I, there's one thing about me, I had friends around me here that didn't like sell me any dreams. Do you know what I'm saying? Like when I was there, they were laughing at my beats. Do you know what I'm saying? Not on a disrespectful thing, but like on the like, you know, like some man them shit, like some nigga shit, you know what I mean? Like, and at the end of the day, like, it's all love. Do you know what I'm saying? It's to better you. It's to make you want to go harder. And then, in turn, I did. And over time, I got better and better. But, um, knowing all of that, yeah, I didn't want to come out until I was of a certain standard. I know that you can't come out perfect, you know what I'm saying? But I wanted to come out signing at least, like, levels with certain people that were already out there, do you know what I'm saying? So, I worked on it. And I worked on it, and I worked on it, and I worked on it for years. Like, and I just had loads of beats, like just sitting there. That like, even now they've never been released. Do you know what I'm saying? And one day um, I started making like the UK rap type of beats, like because I heard the sound starting to like pick up, and you had all of that, the soca beats and the Paneros and the um, the dash beats and the this one and the that. You know what I'm saying? And like. Um, I started to get a little fan base, do you know what I'm saying? And there was like war reports going on and all these different things. And like one beat that I made, which I think it was actually called Levels, funnily enough. Um, Young Reeks just took it, done his team with it, shouted me on Twitter saying like, LG, I'm using the beat, the, 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 the video, blah, blah, blah. Like, and from there, like literally from there, like I said to myself, this is it, like, this is where my foot's gonna get through the door and now I'm just gonna have to make moves, do you know what I'm saying? And it was literally just like that. I was in a, I was in a different position them times when I was like in... I was making music for release, bro. Like, my life was so fucked and I was going through a lot of things, my G, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, was, I didn't even have a house, do you know what I'm saying? I had nowhere to live, but I was trapping. I was like in and out every day. Just like trying to do something to just release, do you know what I mean? So the beats that I was making at the time, it was just an easy way to just, do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, I knew that I'd never leave music and I knew that I'd always be doing music, but like that period of time when I made that beat, I had no idea where it was gonna go. At the time I was just making music. Um, the next thing that like brought me like a step up, I'd say was when um, I met up with the 86 and the 67 lot and I started doing work with them because um, I took some time out to like shoot music videos and make beats at the same time and I was spending a lot of time in South London just like I don't know what you call it like I was just getting around 
you know what I'm saying? Just trying to make ends meet, network. Yeah. And the way I done it was I just meet people on the streets. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I'd walk through the blocks. I'd walk through certain different places. I literally like, you know, like you gotta be careful how you approach people. But I'd approach people like in a way and just be like, yo, do you make music, bro? Do you know what I mean? Car. I'm shooting videos. I just like to get like some freestyles, this and that. The, the, if they're on it, they're on it. If they're not, they're not. Do you know what I mean? And I kind of just respected that and left it there if they weren't. But a lot of people were. And through the ones that were, I kind of like tried to like push my music. And a lot of people didn't pay attention. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, unfortunately. But um, the ones that did were obviously the 86 lot and then in turn i got through to some of the 67 lot because they were working with one of my friends flex and um, flex um had a channel at that time called media 12 and they used to shoot music videos also and um i was working with him with that channel and like kind of through the, the connections we had like he let them know that i make beats and i'm already working with someone over there and this and that and then I hit them up one day and like, cause like the connection was already there. It wasn't too hard to talk, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was pretty much it. Before Let's Lurk came along, there was Trappings Alive. And Trappings Alive was, in my opinion, is where 6-7 started to go like that. And also where I started to go like that, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like we helped each other. Do you know what I mean? Because before that, like six seven were getting like the hundred thousand views, fifty thousand views, you know what I'm saying? Which was good at the time. But then when they done that song, it was a different kind of views they were getting and a different kind of reception they were getting. Um I feel like the vibe that I brought to what they were doing, like it just worked perfectly, do you know what I mean? Because it's a bit more, how can I say, it's a little less dark, do you know what I mean? And it's something that more people can be open to hearing. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's all I wanted to do at the time. Like, I didn't want to hit them with the same proper, like, tight beat sounding shit that they were getting. I wanted to give them something that was a piece of me, but also a piece of history. Do you know what I mean? Something that you're going to make this once and nothing's going to sound like this again. Do you know what I'm saying? And I haven't heard another tune that sounds like Trapping the Life. Do you know what I mean? Let's look, yeah. All right. Me and Gotti, we had a little team called Draw Mob, and we made that together when we linked up on the internet. Cause this is same, this is around the same time when I'm getting my momentum. I'm trying to like just shoot up fast, and in my head, yeah, I've got to create like this illusion that I'm further than where I am. Cause I just jumped in. Like I've been in this scene for about a few months. Do you know what I'm saying? People don't know who I am yet, but I'm pushing the barriers like I'm I'm like making it seem like it's more than it is when I'm talking about it when I'm doing certain things the kind of people that I'm approaching etc etc and it was connected do you know what I'm saying people were open to it and like for me at that time making a team with Gotti was a power move do you know what I'm saying no one had done anything like that at the time and we brought together pretty much all the hardest producers at the time you know what I'm saying? All the ones that were doing numbers, doing big things, making a lot of tunes with a lot of different rappers, like we had them all in one place. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, from there, obviously, it was time to link up. Do you know what I'm saying? So we arranged to meet up, and as it goes, I was around the guy called um, Mega 12. And Mega 12 was also around Gotti, and we linked up at Mega 12's house. And um, we made some music. We made a lot of music. Zef Ellis was also there. Zef Ellis um, happened to be there before we arrived. And um, we kind of, like, this is where we kind of finalised this whole plan to meet this team in. Do you know what I'm saying? Where we kind of decided, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We're going to get this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And obviously everybody had their input. Uh, me and Gotti kind of put it across that anything that me and Gotti are doing is our thing. And we just want to, like, kind of like just drive that but if anybody wants to help or give input uh, we're open do you know what I'm saying and um, from there like we made a few beats and um, one of them was less left and um, literally I think I uploaded it on my SoundCloud and in the space of like an hour it had like a thousand plays and 
my DMs were just full like so I had to take it down and then I took it down and I started emailing it to different artists do you know what I'm saying because my thing was at the time and this is what I was trying to get all my friends on to an extent you can't care too much about people that ain't paying you do you understand what I'm saying so you've got to do what's in your best interest so right now I'm sending this to as many people as I can to get the best tune and get the best result. Do you get me? And if all of them do well, then that's even better. Do you know what I'm saying? Because not one of these people want to pay me. Do you know what I'm saying? And I have no problem with that. Do you know what I mean? But then that means that I've got to make the most of what I've got. Do you know what I'm saying? Which you can't really wrong me for. And um, we sent it to J Gang, sent it to 6 7, sent it to 8 6, sent it to a few other people also, but nothing really came off those songs so um i think first the i think first the jay gang song came out then the eight six song came out then um the six seven song came out but with the jay gang song i don't think he put too much like promotion around it and he didn't really push it very much so people didn't even really realize that it had happened until later do you know what i'm saying when he started to like push it on his and other things do you know what i'm saying but um with the 86 lot and the 67 lot like they done their stuff like i think about six months apart do you know what i'm saying but with that 67 they do like sometimes they do take a little while to finish songs you know what i'm saying like and i can understand it they got a lot of people sending them a lot of beats do you know what i mean so sometimes you get like a backlog of just work to finish and it's not always easy to get everybody in one room at one time or you know what I'm saying? Just a pattern and everything. And um, it took them about six months to release it. So I feel like that's probably why. That's how much work they got going for them at the time. And obviously they just shot up during that time period. So it's like everybody's trying to get a piece of them in it. You know what I'm saying? I'm even, sometimes I feel like maybe I'm lucky that I was the one that they favored at the time to work with. Do you know what I mean? Uh, do you know, I think um, Giggs hit me up on Twitter, <laughs> funnily enough, like he actually hit me on Twitter, asked me for my number and then spoke to me and said like, I'm hard, da 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 da, have I got anything else, like, and um, then I sent him some more stuff and then he um, basically hit me back again and told me like, yo, these bits are hard as well, like I think I'm going to use one of them and then that ended up on his album. Um, clipped him. You know the song Clipped him with um, Gunna D? Yeah, that's um, produced by me and Oms. Let's Lurk gave me a strong fan base. Let's Lurk's got me a lot of um, loyal supporters who, even when I don't make any music or I don't put anything up, they still hit me up like, yo, you're the hardest. Like, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? And it's a good feeling, bro. Do you know what I mean? And on top of that, Les Lurks brought about obviously another song, Man's Not Hot. And that in itself is you know, somewhat a blessing, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And um, I wouldn't say that Les Lurk brought me any like monetary gain or any financial gain or anything like that, but like still just even the opportunity to do that which is now a part of history. Like, you can't never take that away from the UK, you can never take that away from 6 7, you can never take that away from me or Gotti. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's been done and it's, it's something to be proud of. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what it is, yeah? Let's Lurk is actually quite a simple beat and like me, I'm a proper like uh, a feeling man when it comes to music, you know what I'm saying? Like. I can make very deep, technical, mad melodies, chords, progressions, all of that, if I want to. But I prefer a lot of the time to make music that moves you from the inside. And a lot of the time, it's quite simple. It doesn't have, there's, it doesn't have to be mad, like confusing or complicated or anything like that. It's just a feeling. It's just a, it's just like a, a vibration. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's actually really where it was, because. I put together this little this little riff, this little piano riff, and I liked how it was sounding, and I did not want to complicate it. Do you know what I'm saying? So I done a simple, that basic drum pattern, that like, tap, 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 and then I just put like a strong, simple bass line. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Something that's just gonna cut through and just like when it drops, you're gonna feel it. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's what it is, like when it drops, you feel it. Like. Before you even hear it, like, it hits you there, like when you got the, the sound system on and that. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, with Man's Not Hot now, yeah, basically, like, got he's hit me up on Instagram and he's told me somebody's um, using a beat, he's a comedian, da 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 da, Michael Dapper. I've looked into it, I've seen who he is, I've found out that, okay, he's doing this and that, he's pretty big and he's coming up. And um, he said that he wants to use the beat for Let's Lurk to make a new song and he wants to contact me to like make sure that we're doing all the paperwork and all of that. And um, then from there I said to what he called, just tell him to shout me on Insta. He hit me up, he DM me, he told me like, yo, he's saying, I wanna do the business correctly, make sure you eat, da 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 da. So they emailed me a contract now, yeah? And the contract's basically like, it wasn't what I thought was a fair deal. Do you know what I'm saying? So. I've, I've explained to Gotti like we're worth more than this and I feel like we should like set it up do you know what I'm saying I've got good management I've got a music lawyer like we can actually get more than this if Michael Dapp is really looking to go forward with this tune which I'm pretty sure he will and this is what I was trying to say to Gotti at the time like I've got no doubts that he's going to want to put the tune out because it's going to do well for his career do you know what I'm saying this is the perfect time for him to release this so he's gonna wanna play more, do you know what I'm saying? And this is what I was just trying to get across the Gotti at the time. And um, he was like, yeah, 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 all of that. And then I basically said to Michael Dapper, um, just let me like speak to my management and get back to you, etc." During that time, he's phoned me and asked me if I could reproduce the beat. And I didn't get why he was asking me that. And um, I was like, why? And he wasn't really explaining it well. So I was like, um, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to contact my management and then I'm going to get back to you. Because I just don't want to do anything that is like, going to jeopardise me in any way or like, make things worse for me. Do you know what I mean? So I just thought, yeah, let me just get my advice first and then come back to the drawing board. Do you know what I mean? And during the space of that phone call we had and when I was ready to call him, he'd already phoned Gotti, asked Gotti the same thing and Gotti's basically gone ahead and remade the beat. And um, the outcome of this was like, I've been left out, I've been left in the blank, I've been left in the dark, you know what I'm saying? So I don't even know what's fully going on. And I'm thinking, okay, they're gonna get back to us at some point. No one's phoning, like, we're trying to get through, can't get through. And then um, it comes out on the radio. And then at that point, I kind of, I had to phone Gotti and be like, um, what, did you remake the beat? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I swear all week we've been talking, like, um, we was basically on the same page, like, I'm gonna help you out. We're both gonna eat and that's gonna be it. Like, like we're just gonna sit it out and be patient because at the end of the day, like there's a big bag to be made here. Like, this could change your life. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, he just basically just sounded like he didn't know what like I don't know how to explain it, like um, you know when somebody's acting like oblivious, like I, I don't know why I done it, like do you know what I mean? And I was just like, alright, cool. Got off the phone, spoke to my management. Got back on the phone to him again and I was like, um, I'm gonna need you to send me all the files. After a few back and forth on the phone with Gotti and like a few conversations, um, Gotti sent me an email with all the files and um, I went through the beat and basically what he had done is he'd sampled the melody to the beat off of YouTube and downloaded it and just cut the intro out and then looped it and looped it and put the same drum pattern on top and just towards the end like for about 10-20 seconds he's done like a little switch up um, I made a video just like explaining what had gone on gave it to my lawyers etc and we put through a copyright claim and like over the space of a few months everything got ironed up do you know what I mean but um like during the whole the whole process, like I kept trying to explain to Gotti that it's best you just like tell the truth to the people that you're doing the business with because it's not gonna work out for you in the long run. That like, like 
the people in the public, they're not gonna see what's going on here. So you can make it seem how you wanna make it seem for like the camera or for your friends or whatever, but like, let's be real bro, like stop lying. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, there's no point. Didn't wanna hear me, he was being rude on the phone, like being cheeky and that. And I was like, all right, no problem. And then I just left him to do his thing. And then I just got on with what I was getting on with and made all my claims, done everything that I needed to do to secure myself. And um, in the end, it didn't really, it didn't work out greatly for the other, the other people involved in it because they had to kind of like, um, they had to come to an agreement with me before everything could get finished. And there were certain things that needed to be like sent over, you know, to finalize the release of a song like, files need to be sent, etc. contracts need to be signed and I wasn't signing until I was happy and also I wasn't sending over the files until I was happy and Gotti had the files also but wasn't sending them so it didn't make any sense to the people because it's like you made the beat send us the files do you know what I'm saying but um, yeah that was really like that was the the whole confusion I think because like at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, the actual beat for Man's Not Hot is not my personal production. However, I have to be credited because my intellectual property has been used and I wasn't even like I wasn't even made aware. Do you know what I'm saying? No one phoned me. This guy's meant to be like somebody that I work with and I've built like a scene with. Do you know what I'm saying? This whole drill thing, this whole UK rap thing, we've been a big part of it together and you wouldn't even phone me just to let me know that like there's been a change of plan what i will say though yeah is that man's not hurt has definitely changed my life and um it's allowed me to provide for my daughter it's allowed me to leave this country multiple times um i've started to see different things like different parts of the world meet different people and that alone in itself is a blessing because without without man's not hurt i would never have been able to do that you know what I'm saying? And like, I don't know how to put it, but um, like, I've always seen the progress, yeah. But you never know which song is gonna be the one. Do you know what I'm saying? To really open a real door for you, because yeah, I've opened doors with smaller songs and like everything's a stepping stone. But I feel like "Man's Not Hot" was that song that really that like, put me in the game. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. Big up to Michael Daffa for that. So, at the end of the day, uh, like, what I've learned is like, um, even if you've got friends in this this thing of music here, yeah, you've always got to be careful and look after yourself because um, when there's money involved, and when there's opportunities involved, people can change. At the end of the day, and I've also kind of realised that like, a lot of artists they really want to make the most out of the, the producer and the song and like it's really hard to do like what I would think is a fair deal do you know what I'm saying like for me I, I come to agreements that I, I, I'm happy with, with the people that I work with do you know what I'm saying but I see around me a lot of the time a lot of artists are like taking advantage of producers do you know what I'm saying not paying them properly not paying them at all like just taking their beats off YouTube and then vocaling them and you hear purchase your tracks today and it's like you're still doing that in 2018 like come on man like as a scene the UK yeah, I feel like we need to step it up man we're all wearing Balenciagas and Gucci and this thing and that thing but you can't pay the man for your beat bro. do you know what I'm saying like that's when you gotta really look at yourself in the mirror and say what am I rapping about like I'm rapping about money, I'm rapping about how I got it, how I'm a boss. If I was a boss, I'd pay the cost. Do you know what I'm saying? It costs to be a boss. Do you know what I mean? But people are trying to cut corners. You pay the video, man. You don't pay the guy who made the beat. Doesn't make sense, bro. You pay the upload fee. You don't pay the flipping charge for the beat, though. You don't pay the advance. <laughs> Come on, man. I like Whip. H Manada 6 and um, Pac-Man. That's actually my favorite tune that I've produced at the moment. Just cause of how I feel when I hear it. You know what I'm saying? Like, as soon as it drops, it's different, bro. Do 
Do you know what I mean? Um, one producer that I think I'd love to collab with from anywhere in the world. Do you know, I like so much music, it's hard to think, but um, it's better to say who I'm really feeling at the moment. Um, I like Bijan. You might not have heard of him, but he produced Rick, Rick Flair Drip. Okay. Yeah. And he's produced a lot of other stuff as well, but like, that's probably the one that people would have heard of him. But um, obviously, we're on the same label and that, so I've met him before and like just meeting him and seeing what he does, like on Fruity, like live is sick. Like, I want to work with him. And it's going to happen soon. One artist that I'd love to work with is Kanye West. One UK artist that I'd love to work with is Young Ads. One UK producer that I'd love to work with. At the moment, I'm really feeling Mum's beats. I feel his stuff. Three tunes that I'm feeling that come out this year, I think, are um, Jumpy, Ambush, um, produced by Mumps, uh, Tony Soprano by Nance. Produced by Shoni and um, you know that first Gump tune by Lowski. I can't remember who produced it though, but that's hard as well. To all the producers out there, I'd say save your money first and foremost. Make sure you're saving up because in this career of music, yeah, you're definitely, definitely gonna need money to put behind your career for equipment for your own career, like to promote yourself, to push yourself further, and also for the legal side of things. Like, lawyers cost money, and sometimes you may need a lawyer. Do you know what I mean? Um, other than that, read, go on YouTube, watch tutorials, but then make sure that you always do you. Don't do somebody else. Don't try to do me. Don't try to do another person. Try to sound like yourself and try to create your own method. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I think all of the pioneers of today have got their own methods. No one's really doing this thing by the book. Like everybody's read the book, but they do their own thing anyway. Um, I'm working overseas with a lot of artists. In um, I'm working with a couple of artists in Italy. I'm working with a few artists in Amsterdam. Like. There's this guy, Young Ellis, I think he's pretty hard. In Italy, there's um, Jamie Tai and um, a guy called Madman, and they're both pretty sick, so they got pretty strong fan bases over there, and I'm uh, proper, uh, proper fuck with the vibes. Like, like, everywhere I've been in Europe so far, I've proper felt like mad love. You know what I'm saying? Like, people, they show a lot of love overseas, like, and they all fuck with the UK hard. Like, it's mad surprising to me, like, how aware they were of our scene, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, apart from that, I'm just trying to bridge the gap in other places in Europe and just make more music. And obviously work at home in the UK with all the people you've only been working with over the years and many more. Myself, Mazza Beats, Behind The Beat. Shout out to Mixtape Madness for doing this with me. And yeah, you'll see me again soon. Thank you.